Hi guys, welcome back to the Casual Watch Review channel. So in this week's episode, I'm gonna cover a watch that I haven't actually ever reviewed on the channel before or a watch brand, and that is Hoya. I was lucky enough to get hold of two 1970s vintage Hoya watches from a recent visit to Bob's Watches. So I've got an Orteva and then a Montreal to show you guys. And I've even got Steve in the background here to keep a watching eye over me to make sure I uh, get my facts straight. So these are two awesome examples. So let's flip the camera around and dive into the review. As we look at these two great watches, let's talk about the company Hoyer before it was bought by TAG. They were one of the most pioneering watch companies that has ever existed. They were founded by Edouard Hoyer, and Hoyer founded Hoyer Watchmaking Inc. in 1860, and it was over 100 years later that TAG Group purchased a majority stake in the company in 1985. And of course, now they're well known for being owned by LVMH Group. So Edouard Hoyer patented his first chronograph in 1882, and in 1887, the, he patented an oscillating pinion. This is still used today in watches. An oscillating pinion, in layman's terms, is comparable in principle to a car's transmission system. Chronograph watches using this are able to function more accurately thanks to this mechanism. So it was really pioneering at the time. And in fact, the most well-known movement today using this is the very famous Valju 7750. Even though Hoyer patented his first chronograph in 1882, it was not until 1914 that Hoyer introduced its first wristwatch chronograph. In 1933, Hoyer introduced the Ortavia, a dashboard timer used for automobiles and aviation. Ortavia actually comes from the combination of autos and aviation. I've seen later versions of the rally timers. They look just awesome. If the name seems familiar, it's because TAG still uses this name today for a range of vintage inspired watches. So from 1950 to 1970s, Hoyas were popular watches among automobile racers, fans, both professional and amateur. At this time, Hoyer was a leading producer of stopwatches and timing equipment based on their volume of sales. So believe it or not, in 1962, Hoyer became the first Swiss watchmaker in space. John Glenn wore a Hoyer stopwatch when he piloted the Mercury Atlas VI spacecraft on the first US manned space flight to orbit the Earth. That watch is currently on display in the San Diego Air and Space Museum. I went there about six months ago and I must have totally missed it because I was looking at the space exhibition and I guess if I'd known it was there, I would have taken a much closer look, but I will certainly have a look next time. The Ortavia chronograph itself was introduced in 1962 and it featured a rotating bezel marked in either hour, minutes, decimal minutes or one one hundredth minute increments or with a tachymeter scale similar to the two watches that we're looking at here. So Hoyer began using the aforementioned Valju 7750 in 1977, and in the mid-1970s, Hoyer introduced a series of chronographs powered by the Lamania 5100 movement. Hoyer didn't just make Hoyer-branded watches, they also made watches for US rate retailers like Abercrombie & Fitch, and also, of course, very famously, Sears Department Store, under their Sears and Robux brand called Tradition. And these watches you can still find today with Hoyer movements in on eBay. Hoyer formed in 1985 when TAG, which stands for Techniques de Avant-Garde, they manufactured high-tech items such as ceramic turbochargers for Formula One cars. They, with a British businessman called Ron Dennis, acquired Hoyer, and that's why today you see Tag Hoyer. This is always my argument with Tag using the Steve McQueen image because Steve McQueen would have worn a vintage Hoyer. Of course, that vintage Monaco. So what we're looking at here is two excellent examples of Hoyer watches. The first is a silver dial Hoyer. This is currently for sale at Bob's Watches for $8,552. This is the Hoyer 11630. Now I'm no expert on vintage Hoyers, but I believe this one was referred to as the Orange Boy. 
manufactured around 1976. This model has the Hoya Caliber 12, which we'll talk about shortly. Now, I believe it was called the Orange Boy because of its orange hands and dial elements. These are faded on this watch, but can still be seen. It has an automatic movement with sapphire crystal. Both of these watches are quite large for the time that they were manufactured. They're 42 millimeters, which is a very contemporary size. The second watch we're looking at here, and my favorite, is the Hoya Montreal. This is the 110.503NC, and this was made around 1974. This is currently for sale on Bob's watches for $5,356. This also features that Hoya Caliber 12 chronograph movement. This one has an acrylic crystal on it and a tachymeter, and it also has a pulsation scale. This one as well is oversized stainless steel case, so they're not base metal cases, they're stainless steel. This is 42 millimeters as well, and this is actually in really good condition. The Hoya Montreal, this black version, this made its debut in 1972, and not only does the cushion-shaped case measure that oversized 42 millimeters, but it also has that gorgeous contrasting round dial, which gives it a nice look, I think. Also to note the placement of the chronograph's pushers on the right-hand side of the case, while the winding mechanism is on the left-hand side of the case. So both of these watches feature the caliber 12 movement, now, in 1971, this was an improvement that Hoya made over the Caliber 11. They designed this Caliber 11 movement in collaboration with Breitling, Hamilton Buren. The Caliber 11 was introduced in 1969. However, due to some mechanical issues, Hoya presented the improved version, which we're seeing in these watches, which was the Caliber 12, and that was released for production in 1971. The dial of the Hoya Montreal that we're looking at here, this is a chronograph that uses a traditional bicompax layout, as we can see, with two sub-dials. There's a 30-minute register at 3 o'clock, and then we can see the 12-hour register at the 9 o'clock position. This is a, still a layout that's commonly used in modern chronographs. As we can see, it's also got a date window at 6 o'clock, which is different from that other famous racing chronograph, the Omega Speedmaster. One of the really interesting features about this watch is the scale. If you see here, it has both a pulsation scale and a tachymeter scale. So bizarrely, I guess the Hoya Montreal could be used both for the doctor's office for measuring pulse and also at the racetrack. Both of these Caliber 12 models are extremely sought after as Hoya only made them for about four years until they replaced it with a second series which used the Valju 7750. You may hear of newer tags using the Caliber 12 movement, they're not directly linked. And also the tritium, in fact the tritium on both of these versions has patinaed really well to a nice dark colour. I think these are two great examples and I'm so glad to have got my hands on them. I've been really interested about Hoya watches ever since learning the history etc and I did at one time have a Hoya stopwatch but I subsequently sold it because I was worried that I was then going to get into collecting a lot of stopwatches like I have been collecting a lot of watches so I just wanted to show you these two examples and give you a bit of history about Hoya I think these are fascinating and two great examples here that I would be proud to own in my collection although obviously they are quite an investment, but probably an investment that's going to go up in future. Anyway, I'm really interested to know what you think, so let me know in the comments section down below. Let me know which is your favourite out of these two. If this is the first time you're watching one of my uploads, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button and head over to our new podcast. Longer form content, you'll hear me a bit more unplugged. Again, a big thanks to Bob's Watches for letting me film these two. As always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time on the Casual Watch Review channel. Thanks guys, bye.